so op opinion on running ronnie says opinion on running mk677 along injectable hgh it's awesome it's it's great that's that's what we do when we're trying to uh bulk up yeah uh, i mean like especially if someone has hunger problems we're very commonly having people doing transformations who don't eat enough food using the injectable hgh because uh, because we can use that in conjunction with insulin without suppressing natural production of each. Well, we, we would normally be suppressing natural production of HGH by taking insulin, but by injecting growth hormone with the insulin, we get both together. That's what increases IGF. Um, but with the MK677, then we increase hunger and we have elevated growth hormone pretty much all the time, which is helpful for short blasts. Uh, I don't like the idea of being on, on it all the time. Uh, Evil Morty says, why does Rad 140 increase mind muscle connection? I'm not sure, but there's, it's not the only compound that does that, right? There's, if you look at what steroids and SARMs that uh, power lifters use, right? They use check drops, uh, methyltranolone, methyltren is absolutely epic. Methyltren doesn't build any muscle, but injected pre-workout, it, creates a mind muscle connection that's absolutely amazing um i got the same mind muscle connection that methyl trend gives by combining rad 140 uh dmaa um god deep breathing smelling salts closing my eyes while lifting like i combined all these healthy because methyl trends extremely toxic but i love the mind muscle connection but i got that same mind muscle connection by using healthy compounds and that's a, an experiment i want to work on more because if you can create a better mind muscle connection if you can activate more muscle fibers in a shorter period of time that's what bodybuilding is and powerlifting like that's what really gets you a lot of progress like you can you can do progressive overload and build it up over time and just increasing strength but if you want to get right to the heart of the issue you want to try to activate as much muscle in a short period of time as possible and mind muscle connection is the nexus to be able to do that uh what products are currently what products are you currently experimenting with keith says and uh, that are your i think it said that are your favorite well right now i'm on pct i'm on post cycle therapy i'm not on anything like nothing uh i i took blue ox and black ox for my natural testosterone production and I was intending to do HMG and HCG, but I went to Mexico and I forgot it. Uh, so I just took uh, clomiphene and tamoxifen just a little bit in the beginning. And I'm pretty much, my testosterone levels are probably really low right now. Uh, and so what am I experimenting with? Oh, okay, I took GHB, which is my Zyrem prescription. And I'm, I'm starting to take like a low dose in the daytime every once in a while, and it lasts about three hours. And it feels really good and it and it helps me focus because I have my mind's all over the place. I need to narrow that like a laser beam. And sometimes I don't want to be stimulated like an Adderall sort of feeling because I have that also. So I was experimenting with more daytime GHB at lower dosages. Okay, I've done high dose GHB in the daytime, but I never really did like really low, like we'll call it micro dosing of GHB. That's been that's been really awesome. Um other uh, compounds I'm experimenting with. God, I'm drawing a blank because like this is the this period of time in my life. I'm this last two weeks I've used less compounds than I have in the last seven years. Uh, Adam Wells says Black Ox is nowhere to be found online. All sold out. No, 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 it's not sold out. Black Ox, it's on a getenhanced.shop. Adam, try try it there and then see if if it responds. And is Blue Ox good enough to take? alone for SARMs, PCT, and YK11. Okay, so Adam, it depends. Oops, it depends whether, what PCT is needed. I actually just drew, drew this out. What PCT is needed for SARMs uh, depends on these four factors. Uh, how suppressive is the SARM? So YK11, I, this is a long story, but I would call it not super suppressive. Uh, versus like S23 being very suppressive. And then what dosage, the higher the dosage, the more suppressive. Uh, the length of the cycle, the longer a cycle is, the more suppressed. And then genetics, age, and environment. So 
SARMs could be as suppressive as steroids if they were taken for a really high dosage for a really long period of time and taking very powerful SARMs. But normally SARMs are far less uh, suppressive than steroids. Uh, but I also <laughs> I also said better safe than starry, right? Because I, I, I feel like my testosterone level is pretty low right now and I don't like how it feels. And uh, every day I'm thinking like maybe I'll jump back on uh, gear. I will be jumping on everything back pretty soon. Uh, all right, I'm, so many questions. I freaking love these questions. I hope I can see these afterwards and answer them. I, w I wish they came in slow enough to be able to answer each one fully. All right, Mike says, how would you advise using one to two IU of HGH per day for strength and longevity? Best time of day, cycling on and off. Uh, I would use it in the morning. And I could make an equally good argument for using it at night, but here's why I would use the HGH in the morning. Because normally our HGH levels in the morning are low and we already have a natural pulse of HGH at night. And if we take HGH at night, we might suppress our own natural HGH production, which is totally fine because it's, it's not gonna impact our HGH production the next night. It's not, like a, it's not like testosterone suppression, but it's kind of like if I wanna maximize the amount of HGH for the, as little money as possible for the long term, I wanna take the HGH at a period of time in the day where I'm not already producing some of my own HGH. So I'd use it in the morning. Uh, all right, what do you think about boom dosing on HGH and peptides? Okay, I'm going to write that down because I ain't never heard that term before. Boom dosing. Dosing HGH and peptides. Well, first of all, peptides is a very big category. HGH is one of the many peptides that, that exist out there. Um, so I don't know which, like, I would not boom dose melanotan unless you want to throw up or end up in the hospital. That's freaking one of the worst feelings I've ever had is, is taking too much melanotan. Uh, but you know, there's other ones like, um, IGF deaths, you know, maybe something like blasting IGF deaths for a day. And if so, hell yeah, but I would spread it out cause it's got such a short active life. I'd be taking, I'd, I'd, my idea of a boom dose of HGH would be like a hundred micrograms, six times a day. All right. Nick nasty says, how huge are your arms? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, I guess I could give you, is this weird if I give you like a flexing progress update? But this is, this is kind of what I look like. I look dry. Like you can see the lighting is actually not good. I'll, I want to show my abs, but just because like, I think it's helpful to understand where I'm at right now as far as body fat, not because I'm a, an exhibitionist, but I am. So gives you an idea, but I'm, 215 pounds right now, which to me, I feel like skinny. I feel light, I feel weak. I'm on PCT, I've got no anabolics in my system. I've only trained, and this is gonna change very soon. So soon I'm probably gonna jump on another cycle and I'm gonna start training hard again and I'll, and I'll probably be very sensitive and I'll probably grow very fast. But as it is right now, I'm, I'm the smallest I've been in many years. Uh, all right. Best supplements to take for sleep. I could talk about that for an hour, but I'll sell, tell you what I'm using recently. Pregabalin, which is Lyrica, 75 milligrams, along with enhanced, enhanced athlete, enhanced lab sleep juice, which is the scoop of the powder drink. And I drink that before bed, a scoop of the sleep juice. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I drink another scoop of sleep juice. Also the pregabalin for me has a short half-life. So sometimes I won't take it before I go to sleep if I feel like I can sleep good. And then I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll take it. And I also like Ambien because it also has a short half-life. So, because I don't like to feel groggy in the morning. So if I can't sleep and I wake up in the middle of the night, I can still take an Ambien and still wake up in the morning feeling totally refreshed. Before that, I was using edibles. I was using THC edibles uh, between 10 and 20 milligrams, depending on, is that McCormick? Oh, I thought that was Matt McCormick, one of my good friends, different McCormick. Uh, and the edibles, the problem is I'm always groggy in the morning. And then I'm like trying to pound coffee and take Adderall, trying to wake myself up. I freaking hate the THC hangover. And then if I use a vape pen, it's like, eh, ever since I started using the edibles, the vape pen just doesn't help me sleep as much as, as you know, it's like, it's like once I graduated to edibles, it just didn't come close. Plus sex on the edibles is amazing. So I would always take the edibles like 
90 minutes before bed and then I'd have sex right before bed and then I'd sleep good, but then I'd wake up in the morning and be so freaking groggy. So I'm detoxing myself from, from, T, from THC right now.